Hello students, welcome to the migration lessons in our social problems class. Please note that migration is in our social problems textbook and therefore it is seen, perceived at least by some, as an issue. And notice I did not say illegal immigration is a, a particular issue because immigration can be both legal and certainly in the United States we have legal pathways for individuals and families to become citizens worldwide there are legal pathways for that to happen um, in, some, in some countries, but not all. Countries like Japan, South Korea, places like this um, often do not welcome uh, others to become citizens of their nation. Perhaps you can get a visa to live there for a while, to work there for a while. And these are the, some of the topics that you will read about in this, this section of Chapter 9 that we're focused on this week. So immigration is simply movement of of people or groups from one country to the next. I have here across borders, um, but certainly this would not be in, the, in a, uh, a collection of states like the United States. We're not talking about going across the border from Arkansas into Missouri or neighboring states. We're talking about going across borders from countries, say Canada into the United States or the border with Mexico into the United States or immigrating here from Egypt to the United States, these kinds of things. And so migration takes um, a variety of forms. There's different processes, permanent migration where you actually actually leave citizenship from a previous country behind and become a naturalized citizen, for the word that we use in the United States, a naturalized citizen. You can read about that in this particular chapter. Those are um, channels that are taken when legal pathways to residency um, and citizenship occurs. And one of the videos that I curated for you this week is going to look at some of the legal changes that, that took place in the 1990s in the USA that changed the pathways of citizenship for um, legal channels, people to legally become citizens of the United States. And sometimes the changes that were made in the 1990s um, are seen as problematic. Some argue that the uh, previous legal pathways um, were much easier to manage, much uh, softer, kinder, gentler to the, to the immigrant, him or herself, uh, than those changes that were put in place in the 1990s um, that are still in, in effect today. So those changes that were put in place in the 1990s, 30 something years later, are still um, in effect today. And some people see that as problematic. Some people even see that as one of the reasons why um, people opt so often to try to come to this country illegally. And so right now in the media, we certainly have a lot of news stories about um, people coming across illegally at our southern border especially. There are official border crossings where people bring their cars and you know trucks and whatever and have their passports checked and um, the uh, border patrol, uh, you know, stamps your passport and gives people, you know, entry. I just had a very good friend of mine from Honduras come a couple of uh, weeks ago. She has um, a 10-year tourist visa where she can come and go for different periods of time to different places in the United States. Um, and so there are lots of pathways to come into the country legally, but sometimes if you want to remain here longer than, um, let me see, I think my friend's visa says you can come at any time during 10 years, but you can't stay for 10 years. You can come for six weeks at a time, three months at a time, something like that for a visit, but you can't take up residency here. So for people who want to take up residency, the legal pathways sometimes are too prohibitive, and so um, they attempt to, to have um, to, to take an illegal pathway into um, a country and take up residence. And so that's the argument that you see in current events these days about um, 
about migration, one of the problems with migration on the illegal side is that perhaps the legal pathways are too restrictive. Perhaps they encourage people to try to avoid that and get past, you know, pull one over on us, so to speak. And so um, please, in this next video that you're going to watch, please pay attention to those arguments that are put forth because therein lies some of the perceived social problem or the cause of some of the perceived social problem surrounding migration in the United States today. Another um, video that you're going to watch is uh, one of the uh, prime, one of the ministers, the, the governmental ministers in um, Poland currently, who very recently made statements about, um, proud statements that there is zero illegal um, immigration in Poland, and he claims, um, perhaps truthfully, perhaps um, not truthfully, he claims that because there are no um, illegal migrants in in Poland, only legal migrants are allowed in. He claims that that is one of the main reasons why crime rates are so low in that country and why you don't see terror attacks, for instance, or violent protests or things like this. And so these are his claims. And so I have the um, video curated for you to um, watch that also so that you can um, Decide, you know, decide for yourself, and use all the use as much information as possible uh, when you are deciding whether, what type, and whether migration in general is um, a social problem. Certainly, we're presenting it in um, our social problem uh, textbook, and so the perception is there for some, at least. Okay, and so let me go over some of the. Um, some of the key terms that you're going to read in this section of chapter nine. Right off the bat, in the immigration section, you read about some basic vocabulary, pull, push factors and pull factors. And these have to do with conditions in the country of origin for someone and the conditions in the country that they are planning to arrive in and planning to stay in, um, in, in their journey. And so a push factor, if, for instance, um, um, well, I, I mentioned my friend um, who lives and works in Honduras. And so she plans to stay there. She does not um, use uh, this condition in her country that I'm about to explain as a push factor for herself because she plans to stay there. But in her country, she regularly describes problems with crime. We were driving around um, together recently when she was here and uh, stopped at a stop sign and she said, oh, this scares me a little, no, stopped at a light. We were stopped at a red light for a period of time. And she said, wow, in her country, she could not, you know, she avoids places with red lights so often because if you are stopped there, um, you could be a victim of crime. You know, people could run out from, you know, from the sides and, and um, assault you, carjack you, uh, uh, steal from you these kinds of things and so that was one of the is one of the crime situations that she described she also described a situation where water like municipal water supply that comes out of our kitchen sinks when we when we turn on the faucets she also described a situation where the municipal water supply only comes to her apartment complex in her region of town um, twice a week and so when on those two days a week when water actually flows through the pipes the residents are instructed to fill up, you know, water so that they can use the whole rest of the time. And so one of the things that she uh, did a lot of while she was at my house was took long, long hot showers every single day. And she even uh, wanted to wash my dishes in the kitchen sink instead of the dishwasher because she just loved to have that water pressure flowing out of that kitchen sink. And so, you know, she explained these things to me. And so these, and she lives um, a relatively comfortable life compared to a lot of other citizens in that country. And so just just knowing these kind of disadvantages and the differences in her style of life between us and the people in her country, even somebody who's doing so well for herself, as my friend is, um, this could be considered a push factor, something that people would want to get out of a place with disadvantages, and some disadvantages are even worse than, than those that I've described. You want to get out of a place with disadvantages and come to a place. The pull factor is, which place are we going to choose to go to? Sometimes the choice is there. Other times, especially if a push factor has to do with oppression, like religious oppression, or um, some sort of war and you're targeted, um, like the genocide that we um, saw 
it last week when we talked about that um, concept. Sometimes though, there's very significant push factors, and because of the um, targeted way in which a group can be mistreated, oppressed, um, e even you know a. a targeted genocide like we learned about last week, sometimes governments around the world band together and invite groups of refugees, that's a legal statement. In, in the second curated video, by the way, the, um, the guy from Poland that I mentioned, he will discuss briefly the fact that refugee is a legal term that has like a government distinction, a particular type of legal migration. Um, refugee is a particular status that has to be declared. And so push factors and pull factors have to do with your decision or the fact that you might be forced to go from one place to the next and what kind of channel are you going to use in order to make that move. There's different kinds of, um, of migration, chain migration, step migration, cyclical migration or cyclic migration. Chain migration is just a basic vocabulary word that we use to refer to a person who is pushed from their country, they decide to leave, they go to a particular country, they work for a while, and then begin to bring others with them from their original place. So you leave some people behind, people who want to who want to eventually all be together, you leave some people behind, and then you step by step, or I shouldn't use that word because that's a different type of migration, then link in the chain, link in the chain, you bring those people with you to the destination country. Step migration, when I corrected myself just a minute ago, that's another type of, um, of migration where you know that you have the end goal to be way over here in this country or this place over here, but um, you only make small steps at a time. So maybe you are from Haiti and you go from Haiti to Mexico and Mexico to the United States, um, which is, you know you can search for that pathway that people are using um, to to get into the United States, for instance. And so that would each each place where you pause on your journey to your ultimate destination goal would be a step in the process. And so that's another type of migration. This cyclic migration, uh, we have something, had something in Arkansas and other um, states in the South uh, years ago called the Bracero Program, and it was a harvest. It was a cyclic um, migration um, uh, process where during harvest season or during the season that you had expertise in um, that you could offer labor, you could come for a period of time, do the work, and then go back. And that door was open regularly so that these kinds of um, these kinds of temporary migration patterns were part and parcel to the regular cycle of the year. Um, and, and the harvest in particular, they were very common, especially having to do with agricultural labor. Um, so you can do that kind of uh, research. And I believe that's referred to in the second uh, curated video that you're gonna watch this week. Now, one of the things that you will see um, in a, a, a recurring theme, I would say, in the people who focus on migration as a social issue, a social problem, is the fact of otherness. And so quite often, migration brings two differing ethnic groups, perhaps two differing ethnic groups that also have racial differences among them, they bring those together and often people are afraid of or standoffish about or downright hostile toward people who are not like themselves. And so we refer in social sciences, to we refer to this kind of general feeling that people have as otherness. And so quite often, um, in the case of Japan, for instance, they desire a homogeneous um, population. In the case of Poland, the guy that you're going to see in the second curated video, he doesn't pronounce the word um, in a way that we do in the United States, but he, he says that we want a homogeneous population. He's talking about ethnically. Um, he's talking about, in particular, the ethnic type of people that they want in Poland, apparently, um, are Christians instead of other religious groups that could, there's the otherness, that could change the general culture um, through, a, you know, 
or, or prevent groups from assimilating into that culture when they become citizens or when they take up residence there. So there's a whole lot of issues to think about. Not all of them necessarily are going to be perceived as social problems. Sometimes solutions that have been proposed in the past, such as the legal changes in uh, the 1990s in the United States, might be perceived as a social problem. But we do have the power to change that and haven't in the last 30 years. And so there's a whole lot of um, consideration that you have for these, this topic this, this week. And I hope to see a lot of good thoughts um, um, about the solutions that you could propose in your reaction papers. Please text me with questions. Bye.